Thank you, Chairperson. Um, good afternoon, colleagues. I hope you are still with us. And um, I wanted to say, like, um, someone long, long time ago said, very, very weak. Key, you said, Prof. <laughs> I came, I saw, I conquered. Um, I came, I saw, but I'm not sure if we yet conquered this um, big open access story that we've been talking about now the entire day. Um, you've seen our presentations at the back. Um, it has been rolling, it's also in the, at the front desk. And um, I almost want to say, but you've heard it all already, but actually on this little machine of mine, there is still some brilliant news I would like to share with you, that open access does work. It does give us, give our researchers the, the acknowledgement and the um, ability to be cited if they are publishing on open access resources. To be able to do what I need to do, I need to tell you the story of the CUT. It all started out in 2005 when our then, um, it was still the TechCon Freeset at that stage, our then library director then asked that from our exam department that henceforth all our electronic thesis and dissertations of our master's and doctoral dissertations should also include an electronic copy for the library. After many deliberations and a few years that gone by, we decided on this space, the server were purchased, and then during the South African Library Week 2014, March 2014, we officially launched our institutional repository. Um, that was then also during that stage that we started between 2014 and 2016 to capture all what we call the born electronic thesis and dissertations. And then in 2017, um, yes, 2016, 2017, we digitized that that was not yet electronic from our thesis and dissertations. And then we also captured them. In by November 2018, we've also captured our, all of the date accredited uh, articles that was published by our CUT researchers. And then also by November 2019, we've captured our 2018 DA accredited journals. Um, included in our institutional repository, we also have, um, are capturing our in -house, two in-house journals, um, which I might state is also open access. They are available on the Open Access um, African Journal Forum of Subinet, as well as our institutional repository. The one is the Journal for New Generation Sciences, which is a DH accredited art journal, as well as interim. And the population of this grew from zero in 2014. And by 20, the end of 2015, we already captured 661 um, documents. And by now, as, we, as I stand here, we have captured 1,997, close to 2,000 documents in the past four years. The total number of searches cumulatively is at this stage standing at a whopping 12,002.8 million searches. Can I repeat that? 12.28 million searches since April 2014. We are being noticed. Average view per item is 749 times. Now, what does that do to our researchers? Prof. Latigan, I need you to listen, please. The CUT researchers, our CUT rated researchers, in 2014 stood at a whopping nine. Okay, just to put it in context for our um, UFS colleagues, I must just state, and I'm not apologizing, I'm just stating the numbers. Just for the past two years now, we have reached the 20,000 student target. So we're not competing with the WITSIS and the UCTs, we are still a fairly small institution. So to come back to my point, in 2014, we had nine accredited in NRF, oh, nine NRF-rated researchers. 
Um, at the end, as we stand now, at the end of 2019, we have 16. Our projection from 2020 is 80. Starting in 2014, when we started with our institutional repository, it was nine. We are now projecting 2020 to have it doubled to as, for, uh, as 18. So what is the merit of an institutional repository, i.e. being open access? It provides broader access to the information outside CUT boundaries, no longer is the information just contained within the four walls of an institution. The number of CUT researchers has doubled, as I stated, since we've started with our institutional repository. Our research and the researchers are being noticed and cited. This has a direct impact on the H indexes. Because a lot of times people appreciate, we've been, we heard it many times over the past few hours, that H indexes, no, being published is important. But this flip side of the H index is not just getting published, but also getting cited. And if people don't know about you, they can't cite you, and that can't increase your H index. Just on a more informative note, um, there are also additional research support that we, in combination uh, with our um, research um, office that, uh, supply, of course, SPSS. When I mentioned some of these acronyms last time to my friends, they would say, you sound like you just ate this bowl of alphabet soup. But I presume for those of you that are here, you would appreciate and note what this is all about. So SPSS. We also has institutional, both CUT as well as UFS, uh, as org ID membership as of this year. And we also support our individual researchers for our org ID individual membership. This is critical for capturing our data on our institutional repository, on our open access resources. Because as things go along, you move, you change to another institution, people People get married, they change their names, but your org ID will always be unique. We also provide the, the different reference management tools. For example, we subscribe to RefWorks. We also have um, access to EndNote and Mendeley. And then now for the second year in a row, we have now subscribed to Nature Masterclasses to promote the publication of articles. And of course, we're inside the walls of the library, we also provide a research commons, especially for our researchers that comes from wide, far and wide, and just need a place to sit down and work a bit on the dis uh, dissertations before having the next um, appointment with their supervisors. Yes, there are challenges. We heard plenty of them this afternoon. Um, I'm sorry to say that Researchers are still publishing in unaccredited journals. We've heard about the rise and fall of predatory journals, or what I unlovingly call PJs. Um, we've heard that they are, because we've, I've seen it with my own eyes. One year they're on the, um, the list, the eyes I list, the next year they are not, and then suddenly they reappear. So where does that leave us? We must be vigilant out there. But the consequence of both these facts that we publish un in unaccredited journals and in predatory journals is that these articles are not cited as accredited journals on the T8 list of articles that su we submit annually, and therefore we are not being cited. Another critical thing that we heard, um, Glenn just left, but he alluded to it so graciously, is the cost factor. Um, not just the cost of databases, but also the fluctuating cost of the rand dollar and the rand pound and the rand euro. Um, whatever bunnies we've tried to save this year, we're all absorbed by the fluctuating dollar and the fluctuating euro. And also the a very expensive cost of research management tools, like for instance, Copus and Web of Science, is also a critical factor. Having said that, there's still a lot of opportunities out there. I think the mere fact that what happened here today is a, quite a brilliant 
exposure for us as our memorandum of understanding between University Free State and university, our own um, university libraries. Um, I was hoping to see our colleagues from the Free State government here. Are they here? Oh, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you came. And yes, so thank you for coming because we've also collaborated, our two libraries collaborated with the Free State government to help them to establish um, their institutional repository. We must now challenge each other so that we can start to really populate that as well. Future engagements, we've heard about salt like is also come in as the third leg of our agreement between these libraries. And then, of course, um, this is what we do at the moment at the CUT, but the future endeavor um, over and above all these wonderful commitments we've heard today about open access is also the whole notion of research data management. So on that point, I want to give the next chapter over to my co colleague Cornell so that she can tell you what is happening at UOFS. <laughs>